All right, welcome to Force in Motion, 6th grade science, 9th for middle school. We're going to take a look at goal 3. In goal 3, we're going to be identifying and describing. That's really the key here. So we've got six different kinds of forces, and we want to be able to identify, that means recognize when one of those are happening, and be able to describe them. Tell us something about what's happening in each of the different images. So we're going to be doing that throughout the day today. We're going to take a look at goal three. So we're going to be talking about force. And no, we're not talking about the force being with you. We're not doing Star Wars. That's not what's going on. We're talking about this kind of force, a push or a pull on an object. When an object exerts a push or pull on something else, then one object is exerting a force on that second object. And just like velocity... Force is described by not only its strength, but also its direction. So then that picture you see in the bottom right-hand corner where the yellow arrow is pointing towards the object, that's going to cause that object, that blue box, to move the same direction as that yellow arrow. How do you measure force? You measure it in Newtons, Sir Isaac Newton. We'll talk more about him in a minute. The direction and strength are represented by arrows. The combination of forces are called a net force. The net force determines whether an object moves or not. So in the picture, you see that force 1 is acting with 20 newtons towards the book. Force 2 is operating with 18 newtons. So basically, the book is going to move with 2 newtons of force to the left or towards force 2 because force number 1 is greater. Something to keep in mind as we move forward. Force and direction matter. This is on page 335 in your textbook. I love this picture because it shows that you can add forces together. They can subtract, meaning that they can work against each other. Or you may even have a situation where you come together exactly equally to produce no net force. When you have those two situations, adding or subtracting or no net force, you have what's called balanced or unbalanced. When you have an unbalanced force, that can cause an object to start moving, start moving or change direction, result in a net force and cause a change in the object's motion. So that unbalanced force can cause a start, a stop, or a change in directions. When we have a balanced force, there's no change in the object's motion. They're equal and opposite, meaning that overall you end up getting zero. So as you can see in the picture, you've got 20 newtons acting one way, 20 newtons acting the other way. You get a total net force of zero. Great picture straight out of your book. I loved it. If you're, those forces are working together in the first picture, they're unbalanced in the same direction. They're unbalanced in opposite directions. And then you can have a balanced force where they are equal and opposite. So we're going to talk about each kind of force. The first thing you're going, if we're taking a look at this picture, we can see that they are pushing on this box. All right, This box is what's called an applied force. When you apply force to an object or another person, that is an applied force, force applied to an object. So this guy trying to move this box, as you can see here, this box has a mass and he is applying a force and that force is shown with this arrow. And you'll see lots of those over the next couple weeks here. Frictional force is the force that one surface exerts on another when these two surfaces rub together. So if I were to apply a for force to this wooden box, whether it's on ice, on, well, I guess that's carpet, or tile, or something over here, that different types of surfaces are going to cause different types of force against the applied force. A great picture of that is here. You can see the yellow arrow is exerting a force on this object where friction is actually working against it, equal and opposite in the opposite direction. If it were equal, that thing would not move. But as you can see, the yellow arrow is bigger, indicating that you're applying a greater force on this object. The force of gravity is the force that pulls objects toward one another, famous by Sir Isaac Newton as he sits underneath the tree. There's a great uh, video on YouTube I thought I'd show you. It's pretty funny, so check it out. I discovered gravity. Gravity. Isn't that great? I loved that. That was perfect. Let's watch it one more time. I discovered gravity. Gravity. 
That's pretty awesome. I really enjoyed that one because you can see that objects pulling towards one another, that apple pulling towards the earth, is pretty cool, and it shows you exactly what's going on with the force of gravity. Tension force, something a little different. Magnitude of the pulling force exerted by a string, a cable, a chain, or a similar object on another object. So you can see a couple examples. Uh, there's arrows up here in the top right hand corner where you see the two tension, uh, the line in between. You see those force going in the opposite direction indicated by the arrows. You've seen this situation here where you have two guys, sort of stick figures, well, with a tug of war. And you have a, a bridge, a suspension bridge, where you have each of these strings kind of holding up the bottom. Each of those situations are a situation where we have tension. Okay? Tug of war is a great example. Anytime you get that team to move, that means that your force is greater than theirs. That means you're unbalanced. And we can see tension force shown in a tug of war game. Air resistance. Air resistance is the fluid friction experienced by objects moving through the air. So that's an example of why parachutes work the way that they work. And you can see the air causing the hair on these skydivers to go up. And that fluid friction, okay, it's like two surfaces running together, rubber, rubbing together, but it's fluid, meaning that air can move and flow. So air resistance works opposite the weight. Great little video on that. Check that out. Air resistance is the friction or drag that acts on something moving through air. When we drop a piece of paper and an apple at the same time, paper falls slower. Paper took about 1.65 seconds to fall. The apple took about 0.72 seconds to fall. But if you put a book under the paper, the air resistance is blocked, and now they drop almost at the same rate. <laughs> was it really slow motion? As you can see, mm. the book dropped about 0.76 seconds, and the apple took again about 0.72 seconds. Air resistance is affected by the size and mass. Paper had more air resistance because it had less mass and inertia. We'll talk about and inertia. The apple had less air resistance due to its round and compact shape. Depending on air resistance, the terminal velocity increases or decreases. So that's about it for air resistance. Sounds good. They did a good job. All right, so the next one is spring force. Force exerted uh, by a compressed or a stretched spring upon an object when an object comes in contact with it. So you see here in the video that that object is coming in contact with that spring. You can see here, as I show you here, it's got the velocity is V, the F is the force. So you can see that there is a relationship between how fast that block hits the spring and how much force that spring pushes back on that block. So the force exerted by a compressed or stretched spring upon an object that it comes in contact with. The force exerted by a compressed or stretched spring. So you can see that. Uh, top of the screen, you've got a nice little box, I guess, and it's interacting with that spring, and that spring is providing a force on it. A lot of this happens in vehicles and cars, and that spring force is a great uh, thing that makes your ride in your vehicle a little bit more safe and sound and comfortable. So in goal three, we've talked about frictional force, gravitational force, tension force, air resistance, applied force, and spring force. Your job is going to be to be able to identify and describe all those types of forces. Study up. We'll see you soon.